Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Krish Mohan. Uh, this is uh, this is going to be, I think, a short short video. Um, I wanted to jump in to talk about uh, universal basic income again. Yes, fucking again, because it's back. It, we're 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 going to be talking about it because it's back in the uh, uh, it's back in the political zeitgeist. Uh, some of the some of the higher ups are saying they're going to think about it. They're going to consider putting those words in that particular order for the first time in their lives uh, and then and then see what happens. That's uh, sort of what the story is. But before we um, dive into that, uh, please make sure uh, that you hit the like button uh, and that you share this video out because uh, content like this often gets suppressed and I'm pretty sure YouTube is doing a hell of a job suppressing it. Uh, and, uh, that's how it gets shown to new people. That's how it gets shown to people that are even subscribed to it. Um, they don't, they don't really, uh, tell you that I'm putting out new videos. So, um, please make sure you're subscribed. Please make sure you hit the bell to get some notifications and please make sure you hit the like button as well. Uh, because I'm, I'm, the, these videos here are, are part of the, the road reflection series, but I'm going to be doing them kind of sporadically and let, you know, when something of note happens and I feel like I need to talk about them very quick, you know, and, and kind of give you my thoughts about them. Um, so there are four articles that I want to uh, look at in, in regards to this new CARES 2, uh, whatever, whatever they're going to call it, you know, to, 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 to sell it because it, all, it always has to have a catchy name, doesn't it? It always has to have a fun kind of catchy uh, anagram name where, where, where the, 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 the name of the bill makes a word that makes you think, uh, you know, gets, gets you all warm and fuzzy on the inside. Cares, cares act. We care about you. We care about you enough to give you one fucking check that is barely going to cover the rent for next month. We care enough about you to do that. That's the sort of shit that they do, right? Um, so there's this new stimulus bill that, uh, that they're talking about. Uh, that's going around, but um, you know, part and part of it uh, from from the the buzz uh, that that I've been seeing on the on the social feeds and so on and so forth um, has been that there might be a a plan for universal basic income that they're talking about giving two thousand dollars a month to um, every adult over the age of eighteen uh, in the United States of America regardless of whether you pay taxes or not. Um, and that is going to keep going three months uh, after the, um, the pandemic is officially over. Uh, and it's going to be, and they're also saying that it's going to be retroactive to March. So that first payment might be an automatic $4,000 for an individual that'll just pop up into their bank account if it goes exactly the way that they propose it right which is which when it comes to universal basic income this idea i will say uh, you know andrew yang is a complicated character for me uh at this point because uh i liked andrew yang i liked a lot of what he was saying and then the more you kind of got to know him um I, there there was there was some disagreements that i had uh and they were pretty large uh they were larger disagreements um to some of his policies, I didn't agree with what he had to say about uh, Julian Assange. I, di I didn't like his foreign policy or his military policies. Um, I thought they were kind of uh, short-sighted, naive. Those th that was my opinion on that. Uh, and he kind of wish it was it was a little wishy-washy on the um, Medicare for all front. Um, I think ultimately he wanted a version of Medicare for all. Um, and, you know, I said this months ago to 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 uh, the dislike of the of the Yang gang. Uh, and there are, and look, I've met a bunch of people that are part of the Yang gang. Uh, I, I know there are some people that watch my content pretty regularly, that support my work pretty regularly, that are um, that are that are Yang gangers. Uh, that are, that are part of the the, the Yang gangery, uh, if I if I may, uh, and my my issue with what Andrew Yang is proposing is that 
I mean, it's a it was a incredibly incredibly basic version of universal basic income. Uh, it is it is putting a lot of emphasis on basic. <laughs> um, it's basically taking. Uh, sorry to keep saying the word basically over and over again, uh, but uh, it's taking like what we have in social programs and then saying, oh, okay, so if you make, like if, you, if, if you're if you getting uh, SSI or welfare and that equals up to $500, then with, this, with his universal basic income plan, you only get $500 more. And what I think would, what we should do is look at uh, what people are getting in unemployment, in welfare, in SSI, Average that out, and that's your starting point. That's the baseline, right? So if the average is a thousand dollars, like people are getting a thousand dollars out of those three, uh, out of those three things, which is probably not true. Um, as somebody that has been on unemployment um, and has seen SSI and welfare, uh, like I've I've I know people that have that have been on that, and I know like like they have told me what they've made and stuff. Um, it's well below a thousand. Like it would, it would probably be closer to 500 bucks. Like we would be, our baseline would be 500 bucks. And then we start building on top of that. Right. And then we kind of look at 500 bucks as the baseline. And then we go, okay, how much do we need to give to cover like an average amount of rent? Is it an additional $500? Because you have cities like fucking San Francisco and New York city and Seattle, whose rents are astronomical, um, would it be would would we have to now move that baseline up to twelve hundred just to cover that? Uh, and then a supplement of food, which you could look at what the food stamps are. Uh, what what an what an average individual gets on food stamps? Let's say that's five hundred bucks. So now you're looking at two thousand dollars a month just to cover rent and food. Then health care. What is the then you know you roll in you maybe you don't do that if you have Medicare for all. That wouldn't be a part of universal basic income if Medicare for all is institute in, instated. Uh, then you kind of have to look at water and utilities, and say well what is the average cost of that? How do we help supplement people from that? Right. And then maybe it's twenty five hundred dollars. Um, and UBI is may I get so much shit for talking about UBI. I've been talking about UBI for five years and it is such a controversial thing. And every time I bring it up, none of the counter arguments change, by the way, none of the counter arguments change, even when I provide them with um, with my counters to their counter arguments. Uh, it stays the same. It stays the same. And I get it from fucking liberals, neoliberals, conservatives, right? Like libertarians, all these people. Um, and it's very, uh, to, to me, it's like I don't really see another way out of this thing right now. Um, so there are four short artic articles that we can take a look at as to what is actually being proposed. And, and, and I can talk about them a little bit more. So let's, uh, let's get into it. Okay, so this is the first one. It's from Yahoo News. This came out uh, a few weeks ago. If, if, yeah, this came out May 8th. So this is about a week, week ago. It says the group of Senate Democrats unveiled a proposal on Friday that would give most Americans, most Americans a monthly payment of $2,000 until the coronavirus pandemic begins to fade. Senators Kamala Harris, Bernie Sanders, Ed Markley uh, released the so-called Monthly Economic Support Act, MESA, because it's got to have a catchy name, you guys. Okay, if you can't fucking put it on a t-shirt, what's the point, right? What's the point if it's not on a t-shirt? Well, you know, you can't hashtag MESA it. You might as well not even fucking make a bill. Uh, okay, so monthly economic support act that would dramatically expand the one-time stimulus payments of $1,200 sent to most Americans as part of a massive uh, relief package signed at the end of March, which uh, I know a ton of people that have not received it. Similar to a House bill proposed in mid-April, senators called for $2,000 cash payments to every American who earns less than $120,000 a year. It would expand to $4,000 for married couples and also provide an extra $2,000 for each child up to three. So if you got like 15 kids, 
I don't think they're going to be giving you more than six grand, it looks like. Uh, this plan would be retroactive to March. Monthly payments would still last, uh, would, uh, sorry, monthly payments would last until three months after the Health and Human Services Department has declared a pu the public health emergency is over. If that's the case, then the first, and this, and this passes now, like this passes in the month of May, that means in the month of June, they're giving people like $6,000 immediately. Um, if this passes the way that these cats were, are proposing it. And by the way, um, on March 12th, Tulsi Gabbard put out an emergency resolution quoting Andrew Yang and saying that everybody should just be getting $1,000 a month. Starting now, we should be getting $1,000 a month because Americans are going to be um, out of work. They're not going to be able to pay rent. They're not going to be able to get food. This is going to cause a disaster. This is going to cause a recession and possibly even a depression. And this was day fucking one. Day fuck. I was on the road. It, this was like the, one of the last live shows that I performed was March 12th in Moline, Illinois. And, uh, and I remember reading that and going, there's no fucking way. There's no fucking way Nancy Pelosi or any of the neoliberal Democrats are actually going to fucking agree with it. And that's what they did. None of them wanted to even address it. None of them even wanted to look at it. They didn't want to look at it as an emergency plan. Nothing. They just said, fuck you. Whatever. We're just going to keep we're, we're going to give another trillion dollars to the banks. That's what they did. The first thing they did was bail out the goddamn banks. One point two trillion dollars for the banks. Then it was two point two trillion dollars for the banks. Before they even had an inkling. Before before this idea was even just a glimmer in Nancy Pelosi's eye, <laughs> they just gave two point two trillion dollars to the fucking banks. Right. And then Bernie Sanders came up with with his provisions uh, towards the end of March, which included the two thousand dollars a month uh, to cover people's uh, rents and bills and all this other stuff that they're probably going to need. Right. This becomes as as the name would suggest, fucking basic needs. <sighs> OK, so I mean, they're saying that this is going to retroactively go to go to March. Which I'm sure that if it does retroactively go to March, they would they would not give you the entire two thousand dollars for March. They would say, oh, well, it was only kind of half of March. So we'll give you like maybe a thousand. We'll give you seven fifty for March. Let's do seven fifty for March. Right. They'll they'll start bartering and negotiating about uh, about this fucking bill. So. Uh, we continue, it says the it would bar debtors from collecting any of the money for repayments and would deliver cash regardless of whether people have a social security number or filed taxes last year. Uh, the one, quote, the one-time $1,200 that many Americans received is not nearly enough to pay rent, put food on the table, or make ends meet, Sanders. Uh, a two-time Democratic presidential candidate presidential candidate said in a statement during this unprecedented crisis congress has a responsibility to make sure that every working class household in america receives two thousand dollars emergency payment uh, a month for each family member but when the fuck is the democratic party actually legislated on behalf of the working class people the answer to that is probably never you can go all the way back to 1912 to see how the Democratic Party, anytime somebody comes up and steps up for the worker, they squash that shit. Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson. That guy, that guy fucking did not do anything for the working class person. And that trend has continued for virtually over a goddamn century. Okay, the crisis has walloped Americans financially in six weeks. Um, since the majority uh, of the country has shut down uh, to mitigate the spread of the virus, more than 30 million workers have lost their jobs. Unemployment at this scale has been uh, recorded since the Great, Impression, Great Depression when the jobless rates peaked at 25%. Basically, they're saying that we might be headed back to that. They've been saying that for weeks. Uh, NPR PBS NewsHour, Marxist poll released Wednesday revealed that 50% of Americans said that 
they or someone in their household have either lost a job or had hours reduced as a result of the uh, virus outbreak. Uh, that is up from 18% a month ago. Yeah, I mean, the, that's that also totally fucking makes sense because as we keep going, we kind of look at more and more industries that become non-essential and start shutting down. Forcing people uh, to think about how they're going to earn money, how they're going to like put fucking food on their table, what they're going to do about rent and all this other shit. Uh, and then whenever they whenever they start panicking about it because they can't internally reflect to see what they can do in order to alleviate that problem or the fact that maybe they think that the government should be helping them out and the government fucking doesn't help them out and gives them a check for $1,200. Meanwhile, the banks and the corporations have received trillions and trillions of dollars. They sit there and they go, well, I fucking deserve a haircut. That's my goddamn right. And then they go and protest, uh, a, a, you know, on the steps of the fucking Capitol because they can't internally reflect. They can't figure out what they need to do. Anyway, uh, this plan resembles a, pr a proposal introduced in mid-April by Democratic Representatives Joe O'Connor and Tim Ryan. The Emergency Money for Peoples Act would distribute $2,000 cash payment to every American aged 16 or older who earns less than $130,000 annually. Families with children receive $500 per child, up to three children. Uh, so if you're going to keep count, we had Tulsi Gabbard, March 12th. Then we had Bernie Sanders at the end of March. He had a plan up on his website, uh, and I do believe I talked about these two things. Um, you had Ro Khanna that that we just talked about here, and now you have this. And then now you have what what the House Democrats might be doing. So we've had five different chances to just get this on the books. And the Democrats have not done dick all about it. And this is supposed to be the big party of the people, right? So let's move to this one here. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay. House Democrats on Tuesday. This is just, this is yesterday. Uh, right yesterday let me make sure yeah, yeah, yeah uh updated on may 12th so we're on may 13th so this is yesterday house democrats on tuesday unveiled a massive three trillion dollar coronavirus relief fund which includes another round of direct payments to americans designed to ease the pandemic's effects on the health care system and the economy here's the problem this quarantine thing this lockdown thing which you know i think some people are taking it a little bit too seriously In terms of fact, like, they're never leaving their house. They're kind of just stuck in there, cooped up, getting stir-crazy. Which, look, I'm not saying fucking go out and have a party, you know, but you can go for a walk around your block, right? Like, go to the grocery store, wear a mask, be responsible. It's not a big deal. But these people are just like, we're quarantined. We got to fucking stay inside. And then they go crazy. And then they're like, we got to protest it. Again, it's just like, they're not, Americans are not built to self-reflect they're not built to look inside themselves and say what is going on and how can i improve myself because that american exceptionalism says that you already are the best so why would you internally reflect and think about how you can better yourself as a person and because because they're not built like that way they're they're, they're like my haircut is my freedom or whatever the fuck. And then they're like, I, how do I show my freedom is my gun? And it's just like, nope, all those things, not, not, not accurate. All right. So Democratic leaders announced the House will vote on a gargantuan measure this Friday. So in like two days, leaving members with less than three days to pour over a, a nearly 2000 page bill, which they don't fucking read. They have some poor intern read it and then spark note it to them. That's kind of what they do, right? Like, that's what the interns are there for. The interns don't get fucking get paid, and then they have to read these fucking bills and spark note it to people like Nancy Pelosi, and then Nancy Pelosi gets to come out and, you know, make her big statement and, and become the queen of all Yas queens. Like, look at her saying it to Donald Trump. She don't need no man, which I'm pretty sure she, she's married. Whatever. Uh, okay, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi defended the costs on Capitol Hill 
the chairman of the Federal Reserve Bank has told us to think big because interest rates are so low. We intend to use those low interest rates to bolster the American people. We must think big for the people now because if we don't, it will cost more lives and the livelihoods later. Not acting is the most expensive course. You haven't acted, period. She hasn't fucking done anything. She, like, every single time anybody brought up direct payments or monthly cash payments directly to Americans, she was like, no, unemployment insurance. No, health care incentives. No, we should reroute the taxation this way. We should give corporations and then they can allocate the money to their people. What the fuck has that ever worked? Never. Is the answer, yeah, the answer is fucking never, Nance. With your <laughs> fancy floral pattern masks. Think big. Yeah, you know what they did? They already thought big. $5 trillion already has gone to the uh, financial sector and corporations. They've already thought big, you guys. Think big. Are, are, is the American people going to receive $5 trillion now? Because it doesn't look like we are. That's a tr $3 trillion. That's still less than what the banks received. Even if this measure clears the House on Friday, the vote is expected to be highly partisan and straight down party lines. There are roadblocks in the Senate where Republicans have, count, have said countless times now that they don't need an imminent need for another emergency relief punt. Yeah, it's because the fucking Republicans are out of their gourds. And the Republicans have constantly been honest about not being on the side of the American working class. They're straight up about it. They're like, oh, is this a bill that's going to directly give cash to people that need it? Yeah, well, fuck poor people. I don't care about poor people. Like, Mitch McConnell comes out and says that shit all the time. Nancy Pelosi skirts around it, and then she goes, well, we compromise on behalf of whom? On behalf of corporations. That's who she compromises for. She compromises for the top 1% of 1%. She compromises for fucking Jeff Bezos and his cohorts. When has there ever been a compromise that has been like, yeah, you know what? You billionaires are going to lose a couple of your billions. Guess what? At the end of the day, you're still going to be fucking billionaires. Never. Not fucking once. The House is expected to vote on a remote voting resolution Friday, which does not have, appear to have Republican backing. Yeah, this idea has never had Republican backing. When it's direct money to Americans' pockets, when it's direct money to the working class's pockets, it never has Republican support. And it's up to the Democrats, because they are these, they, they proclaim themselves to be the champions of the people. Brr, like, they're, they're supposed to fucking fight for that shit. And they never fucking do. And they never fucking do. This is from the end of April. This is from the end of April. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has said Monday that Congress may need to consider a guaranteed income for Americans as one way to keep the people employed while the country remains paralyzed by the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, let's see what works, what is operational, and what needs attention. Yeah, you know what, what, what works? Fucking universal basic income. Guaranteed fucking teed it'll work. Guaranteed fucking teed if you give people an income during a, especially during a fucking pandemic, when they can't go to work, when they can't earn a living, and this, 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 this puritanical need for work has been drilled into people's skulls on a regular fucking basis. Universal basic income is going to work. Because people will then have a financial incentive to stay at home. Incentivizing things works better than punishment. Psychologically proven. What is operational? Uh, fucking nothing is operational. The government's not operational. 
you guys levy and vote for corporations. What needs attention? The fucking middle class. The middle class has needed attention for the entirety of this crisis. Essential workers have needed attention, and you've ignored that. You've ignored all of the essential worker strikes. You've, ascent- you've, you've ignored all this shit, and you've pretended to be on the side of people for how fucking long now? She's going to she's going to do means testing for the shit in the middle of a global pandemic. You're like, but we need to see if it works in this condition. No, that's not the time for that. You know, what would have been the time for that fucking 2016. You could have been like, we can means test it now. But you didn't. You called ideas like universal basic income crazy. Oh, my goodness. It's free money. It's free money. It's socialism. But if socialism comes to America, then everybody's genitalia will explode from from the lack of freedom. Others have suggested a minimum income, a guaranteed income for the people. Is that worthy of attention? Perhaps so, because they're are many more people than just in small businesses and hired by small business that may need some assistance as well. Holy shit. Took you fucking long enough to get it. When did you discover that? Did you step outside your giant mansion in San Francisco and look outside onto the mission? Did you go into the tenderloin and see the situation there? Because I fucking did. An aid to Pelosi. This is the part where it gets good, you guys. An aid to Pelosi later clarified that the speaker was referring to, referring specifically to paycheck guarantee proposals and not a more sweeping universal basic income. She can't even fucking say the words because if she says the words, she thinks that fucking Lenin is going to come out of her chest. Like the, like, like a, like a, the, the alien, right? Just, Workers revolts Bolshevism Right? Like it'll just pop out of her fucking chest for it. In recent weeks several Democratic members of Congress have introduced proposals that would grant uh, that would give grants to employers of all size, not just small businesses, and let them continue paying their employees. They argue that such grants would keep employees from having to file for unemployment insurance and help ensure that businesses are ready to reopen right away when the pandemic subsides. That's not going to happen because there's going to be too many scared people because you haven't proven on a health and science basis uh, that it's going to be safe to re-enter the world. And and if you want to, you have to provide a treatment plan and you can't make it so that the treatment plan is too expensive because when it's too expensive, people won't fucking go get it. And if people don't go get it, then the virus continues to spread around. So you have to make it accessible for everybody, which means you have to forego your fucking paycheck, which means the billionaires who are funding this testing and the corporations that have all these testing kits and all that. Well, I guess the CEO is going to have to make a couple of million dollars less this year. Can you can you guys see the tear that I'm shedding? Oh, because there isn't there isn't one for that. Because you're still a fucking millionaire at the end of the day. Even when you lose a couple million by providing free testing to people that need it. So the center part kind of goes over what we saw in the last one. Um, The $2 trillion CARES Act that was signed into law on March 27th included a one-time cash payment of $1,200 for every American making under $90,000 annually with no known treatment yet for COVID-19 and a coronavirus vaccine more than a year away, it's it's becoming clear to Congress that more money uh, will be needed in order to keep millions of businesses from laying off their employees when existing short-term aid runs out. So they're basically like, oh shit, we might need to actually do this thing. We might actually need to uh, get like provide for the people. Like we might actually need to do what a government's supposed to do. Like, you guys might actually need to do your fucking jobs. Holy shit. What an idea. What a fucking idea. So, this is uh, the Daily 
signal. I'm not familiar with this site. This is not a site that uh, that I frequent or pay attention to a whole lot. Um, I, there are some con conservative rags that I will that I will uh, you know read through just to see what the other side is saying. Like the Federalist, I, I, I've I've read some articles out of that. Uh, it's good to kind of read. This guy said, uh, is uh, Jared Stepman. This article is fucking bonkers, you guys. So um, immediately he starts with basically being like the the fucking leftist liberal progressive agenda to to make you f fucking change yourself into a transgender queer non-binary blue-haired fucking you know individual when listen man when you're a man you're a man when you're a woman you're a woman all right that's just the way it is but he basically is just like the progressives are eager not to let a crisis go to waste and are now aggressively pushing some ideas amid covid19 pandemic that would be rejected in less desperate times like, he ba like, that whole sentence is basically fucking liberal agenda, baby. That's all that reads to me. <laughs> so he talks about, what well, you know, all the stuff that we uh, just read, addresses uh, universal basic income. He Now, he says UBI has been around for decades. It's actually been around for centuries. Fucking centuries, you guys. Um, Thomas More, I'm going to read you a quote from a very old piece that I wrote about universal basic income in 2017. Um, Thomas More wrote a book called Utopia in the 1500s, and he says this, instead of inflicting these horrible punishments, it would be far more to the point to provide everyone with some means of livelihood so that no one, that, so that nobody's under the frightful necessities of becoming first a thief then a corpse. I want to read that one more time without stumbling over it. Instead of inflicting these horrible punishments, it would be far more to the point to provide everyone with some means of livelihood so that nobody's under the frightful necessity of becoming first a thief, then a corpse. Thomas More is essentially pointing out how something like universal basic income would fundamentally change society. This would be a paradigm shift in the way that we run societies. That is in the 1500s. So this dude's like, it's been around for decades. Nah, bruh. It's been around for centuries. It's a really old fucking idea. People in the 1500s were like, hey, it's going to come to a point where we're going to have to find fulfillment in work, not just profit. It's going to come to a point where, where, where a profit-driven economy is going to stop providing for its people. And when people get desperate, they do desperate things like become thieves. And that is seen as illegal in society. And then they get murdered. They get put to death. So maybe we change that shit. Maybe we get rid of the, 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 the fundamental core of what makes a thief, right? The, the desperation for needing certain resources. Maybe we don't live in a scarcity economy. Maybe we don't live in a war-driven economy. Fucking 1500s, this dude saw it. <laughs> um, Pope Francis mentioned it, right? Pope Francis mentioned that we should try UBI. I've talked about Spain. Uh, they want to make UBI per, uh, permanent. Nadia Calvino, uh, Spain's Minister of Economic Affairs, said that they want to make it a permanent part of, um, of their thing. Now, this is where, this is the opposition that they're facing. And in... And to me, this is the opposition that Pelosi and Schumer and all of these fucking corporate Democrats are just going to give into. I think Bernie's probably going to give into this shit, too, because he's been that's sort of the pattern of his behavior now as well. Um, you know, uh, it says this as well, meaning as some of these proposals may be or as attractive as they seem. As an alternative to other forms of welfare, universal basic income hasn't taken off where it's been tried and ultimately ends up being 
anti-work. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it pushes the notion of more meaningful work, actually self-internalizing and looking at what am I good at? What am I passionate about? How do I take what I'm passionate about and make it my job so I don't have to hate my job? How many people wake up every morning and dread the fact that they have to go into work? How many people wake up every morning and, and sit there and say, God damn it, I fucking hate my life because I have to spend eight hours in a gray fucking cubicle listening to a goddamn Karen talk about her stupid fucking kids. That is like that is like a notion that everybody has in this country. They have to sit through traffic. Everybody hates it. It's not anti-work. It's proposing the notion of meaningful work. It's proposing the notion that perhaps we should be looking for work that that is innovative, that provides progress, that helps humanity and mankind, helps you find a purpose, and we drift away from profit different incentives. We, we look for other modes of, of incentives. We, we look for other modes of, of, of bursting some serotonin in your brain. Instead of being worker drones in factories that we don't need to fucking be worker drones about. Plus, automation's coming to get rid of that worker drone mentality anyway. Finland launched a basic income program in 2017, handing out the equivalent of about $700 a month to a random group of 2,000 recipients. Finland's program was short-lived and never became universal. Finnish taxpayers got fed up with this, with simply giving people money, especially because it meant that they would get slapped with a sizable tax increase. A couple things wrong with that. The notion is, yes, there is going to be a tax increase. But that means everybody pays into it, including fucking billionaires. So, so me and you might have to pay maybe two, three hundred bucks extra in taxes. But billionaires will actually have to fucking pay their taxes. Like for the first time ever, it's like, hey, guess what? That island you hide your money in doesn't actually fucking matter. Doesn't fucking matter anymore. You still got to pay your, uh, your taxes. Oh, guess what? Is it... Is it $2.8 billion, which is an astronomical amount of money? Then great, that's what you pay into the system. And now we have enough money to help everybody. If everybody's taking part in it, it's not, it's not unfair. It becomes more fair. The other reason is they basically looked at the data and said, this is, we can't accurately gather um, like the right information because the population size is too small, the time limit is too short, we can't actually see how people are gonna to adapt to this behavior. Because yes, when you instate something like universal basic income, after somebody has been busting their ass and working at two different jobs to make ends meet, and all of a sudden they don't have to do that anymore, yeah, people are gonna fucking take a break because they deserve it. They deserve to take a break. Chill the fuck out. Spend time with your family. It's not a big deal. People are going to be fine. They're going to take a break, especially now. Especially now. Absolutely. But what you will find is in that break, people will come up with ideas. People will figure out what they're good at. People will give, figure out what they're passionate about and start pursuing that. Because now you've removed the limitations of money. That was always one of the things that people would always say to me is that being a comedian is impractical because there's not enough money in it. <laughs> you know, how are you going to earn a living? It's like, yeah, it's hard. It's difficult. And sometimes I don't make ends meet. There's, there's definitely been a month or two. It, it, well, I mean, it's less and less now, but there have definitely been months where I like struggled through it, had to get extra jobs, had to go through sleepless nights working extra shifts at whatever, doing gig economy stuff or picking up a, you know, a, a bullshit acting job or something. Yeah, that's happened. If I didn't have to worry about that, if I got $2,000 a month, I would invest that into so much more I would be able to pay somebody to edit my videos. I would be able to pay somebody to help me with audio production. I would be able to be, I would, I would probably be able to go on the ground and do more like journalism type stuff, you know, be able to do more research. Holy shit. There's so much more I could do just with an extra $2,000. 
it's unfathomable how much more I'd be able to do. I'd be able to spend time in cities. And this is, by the way, this is just me, right? Like, I'd be able to spend a couple days in cities doing a, a stand-up comedy show and then a live podcast that I can introduce some community leaders and whatever, right? Like, these are all ideas I've had for a long time. And why haven't I been able to do them? Fucking money. Because I don't have the money to do it. I don't have the money to, to, to do a live version of Taboo Table Talk because I can't pay anybody that's going to be performing on those shows. And I feel genuinely terrible when I do that. Because I'm not like Jeff Bezos. I'm not like the Waltons. I'm not like Tim Cook or JP, the person that owns J.P. Morgan Chase. If somebody does something for me, I want to be able to get, you know, be, give them something. A, a product or some money for being a part of the, a crazy project that I thought up of. And I can't do that right now. And it sucks. And that's why I won't be able to c- create any of those ideas. And that's just me. That's just one individual. What would you do with that? How many people would would be like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to take two months off. I'm going to read a book. I'm going to fucking hang out with my kids. I'm going to go fishing. I'm going to take care of my body. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fucking go on a smoothie diet. Holy shit. The Finnish people basically looked at that and said, this is not ample time and this is not an ample population size for us to actually make a educated guess as to what universal basic income actually does. We need more people and more time. A study by the Organization for Economic Cooperation Cooperation and Development even suggested that the program would raise rather than reduce poverty rates. Fucking how? This sounds like a neocon think tank. Because neocon think tanks always have names like, they always put the word cooperation and development in their names. One way or another, it was hardly a panacea to alleviate the problems of poverty and unemployment. And the Finnish program ended after just one year. Uh, There were earlier efforts to intact a basic income in the United States in 1970s, however, a study found that for each $1,000 in added benefits, there was an average $660 reduction in earnings, meaning that $3,000 that $3, in government benefits was required for a net increase of uh, $1,000 in family income. That sounds like a fucking SAT math problem that I need to solve. But it also kind of goes into the point of like, uh, yeah, that should be the baseline. Whatever, whatever social programs are in place, you should average them out and that should be the baseline that you start from and then figure out what you need to give people on top of. Recreation should also be included in universal basic incomes. At the very least, it seems that universal basic income uh, lessens the incentive to work. Fucking... For a little bit, yes. Let people take a fucking break. But that's not what conservatives ever want. Conservatives are like, work 24-7. If you're not working, you need to be with Jesus. You know what Jesus wanted to do? Fucking chill out. That's why he left and didn't want to come back. You think Jesus is building crosses up in heaven right now? Fuck no. Jesus cashed out. (laughs) He took his 401k, went to the kingdom of heaven, and is chilling the fuck out. He's just like, I'm taking the next eternity. I might take two eternities to just sip some fucking mojitos and hang out with Mary Magdalene. You know, we got some positions we haven't tried. There's a whole universe, but what would you guys fucking know? You guys are too busy being worker drones. You can't even think beyond the scope of just, you know, what... A, a nine to five work routine. Creative in, create, creating incentives for people to work less uh, with a recent round of federal unemployment insurance benefits that is disincentivizing employment for many Americans might seem necessary in time of emergency given staggering job losses the country face. But it, making it a long term solution to our problems could quickly create a malignant cycle of dependency as fewer Americans work. And everyone else is left to pick up an ever-expanding taxpayer tab.
make the billionaires pay their fucking taxes. Where is that included in this article? Such a system might um, function for a little while, but it would ultimately erode and further diminish our free society. Yeah, because people are so free now when their health care is dependent on their jobs, when who gets how much food their kids get to eat is dependent on their jobs, and their slave masters, oh, but you call them CEOs. I'm sorry, you call them CEOs. Such a system might function for a little while, but it would ultimately erode the diminished free society. Okay, America and other countries around the globe face a unique set of health and economic challenges right now. Those challenges will undoubtedly spur some rethinking about our policies that may need to change to adapt to a changing world. Yeah, it's called being progressive. It's called evolution. One thing doesn't change, however, is human nature. Also not fucking true. Human nature changes all the time, depending on what stresses are around us. Human nature changed from being hunter-gatherers to what we are now. Human nature also changes. That is not a constant. So you're fucking wrong. <laughs> a system that incentivizes Americans to work less and become more dependent on government largesse is unlikely to make poverty a thing of the past and most more likely to erode the prosperity that's been a hallmark of the most productive people in work history. That's not fucking true. This is not the most productive time. This is not the most productive time. This is the time where mo more people have been working for absolutely less, where the income gap fucking gets wider and wider and wider. And finally, we're trying to do something where it's like, oh, maybe we don't do this over, we, maybe we try to do this. Maybe we try to bring that shit a little bit closer together. Maybe we start rethinking the notion of billionaires. Maybe we start rethinking the notion that maybe if you live in a, in, in, in a city, let's say New York City, your fucking apartment doesn't have to be 19,000 times more expensive than anywhere else in the country. Maybe if you live in San Francisco, it doesn't have to be 38 million times more expensive than anywhere else in the country. Maybe real estate doesn't really matter because it's a made up motherfucking concept and it doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter where you live. You live in a place because it's your preferential choice to live there. I like living in Pittsburgh. I like living in the city. That's just my choice. There's other people that don't. That's cool. You still get to make that choice. Why? Because the real estate costs are the same. You make intrinsic choices because you feel like that's what you need to make. You do a job that you feel like you need to do. And then the other thing is, well, everybody's going to choose creative jobs. We don't have time for people to learn guitar lessons and blah, 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 blah. It's like, nobody wants to, do you understand that like pursuing something creative is not what everybody else wants? Some people like doing, uh, I don't know, fucking woodwork. Do you think everybody in the old ages were like, we have to all be blacksmiths? Like that's not how it fucking worked. Again, human nature changes. It's not widening the poverty gap. It's actually closing it. Make, their, make the fucking billionaires pay their tax. Why don't you put that into a law? Where's that cute little name? For a bill. <laughs> put, put that into a bill. Make billionaires pay their taxes act. I don't have a cute name for it. Fuck you, Bezos. Can that be the act's name? F-Y-B-A. FIBA. There you go. Hashtag FIBA. Fuck you, Bezos. Act. That's the one where you make, your, make the fucking billionaires pay their taxes. The Panama Papers three years ago revealed that they're hiding their shit in offshore tax havens and also the state of Delaware, which is... What? Like, yeah, okay, fine. Nobody wants to go to Delaware. So they're like, yeah, just stash a bunch of money there. That'll be it. It's just like Joe Biden, a couple of his constituents, and uh, and just everybody. Shell corporations are in Delaware. That's that's what it is. We'll see what happens. I mean, honestly, UBI will fundamentally change the way that we look at everything. It'll fundamentally change the way that we look at everything. 
Why do people steal shit? It's because they need it and they don't have the monetary resources to, to get it. Like Thomas More pointed out in the 1500s. Criminal justice would change. Fucking real estate would change. The way we look at food would change. The way we look at jobs would change. Because it's not an incentive to not work. It's an incentive to look for more meaningful work. Boy, why haven't you gotten a degree in, uh, you know, solar technology? Or in, in, in figuring out uh, the, 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 the physics of solar technology and making that more efficient? Oh, is it because college is crazy expensive and you, didn't, you couldn't afford to go into debt again? Well, great. Now, here we go. $2,000 a month. Does that help? All this shit would change. And you know who you know who Nancy Pelosi is gonna fucking bend to? She's gonna she's gonna bend to, to, to that last asshole that we read, Jarrett Stepman. And people like Jarrett Stepman and Lindsey Graham and Mitch McConnell. Because she doesn't go in to legislate on our behalf. Oh fuck no. Nancy Pelosi goes to legislate on the behalf of who is going to pay Nancy Pelosi. It's big corporations, big banks pharmaceutical industry that's who's that's who she's legislating for she ain't legislating for us she she ain't never legislated for us but she will legislate on behalf of the fucking banks all right um that's where we're gonna end this today thank you guys for for tuning in this is a little impromptu a uh, little video I wanted to kind of talk about that. We'll see what happens with this bill. Like I said, uh, whatever they compromise, they compromise on uh, uh, to, 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 to benefit themselves and to benefit corporations. And, and I would love to be wrong in this situation, but I don't feel like I'm going to be. I think Nancy Pelosi is not going to give us any sort of um, universal basic income, and she's going to be like, ah, another fucking payment. There you go. Here's another $1,200. If you watch her interview, she stumbles all the time. Right. She she kind of has to stumble when she talks and she's and she talks with like this shaky voice. And yeah, I get it. She's like 17 million years old. Uh, you know, uh, she's seen the Cretaceous period. I get it. Uh, but uh, um, I, th I, I think what it is, is Nancy has to ha lie. And, but her brain wants her to speak the truth. So there is a there's a gap where she comes out and she says that we are coming up with uh, new ways to help the American people. But what she really wants to say is, fuck the poor. That's what she really wants to say. And her brain keeps signaling those words to her mouth, and she has to fight to form other words. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, you, you know what to do uh, with these videos. You can like, you can share it. Uh, make sure you're subscribed because this shit will probably get suppressed. When you talk about ideas like this, you they are probably going to get suppressed. So um, if you enjoyed it, make sure you share it with some people. Make sure you uh, get the word out. Uh, I'm dropping a new album soon. Uh, you can pre-order it at my Bandcamp page. Uh, the links will be in the description of the video. Uh, I dropped a trailer for it yesterday. Go check that out. You can go see. You can go check out that trailer. Um, and uh, what else is happening? Oh, I'm doing a bunch of uh, virtual stand-up comedy shows because uh, I can't perform live, but I can perform virtually. And, and it's going to be a different show every time. It's going to be on Fridays, 9 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. Or no, I'm sorry. 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Mountain, 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, time zones, they're a thing. Uh, but the next one is May 22nd, May 22nd, 9 p.m. Eastern. Get your tickets for that right now. Spots are limited. There's only 20 spots available. If you are in a financially precarious situation and you need some help, please contact me and I will give you a code for a free ticket. Um, share, share, share. That's the b biggest way that you can fucking help. You can become a sustaining member if you have the ability to. You can make a one-time donation if you'd like to. Uh, all the links are in the description below. And, uh, yeah, the next regular video will probably be on, um, on Saturday. I will be going live on Saturday on Facebook. So you can, uh, you can have a conversation with me, uh, live on air, so to speak. 
And uh, yeah, I think that's it. This still ended up being close to a fucking hour because I'm a long-winded son of a bitch. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Till next time, see you on the road.